want to get that question out in the midst of me covering something, then please light the uh, chat box up, guys. Uh, and yeah. So, guys, the first house. The first house. Okay. Uh, houses in general, guys. The three most fundamental concepts. The three most fundamental concepts when we're looking at reading a chart, looking at a chart is going to be the houses, the signs, and the planets. Before we start even getting into aspects, before we, I, I, I feel like that can be very confusing for somebody new into astrology, trying to dive deep into aspects and, and it's hard and you don't have the, you know, the fundamental knowledge of those things, right? The houses, the planets, and the signs, all right? And when we look at the houses, we have to understand these are the first, this, this element of our chart was the first things established for the most part, this space. All right, so we live in a solar system, and what separates this solar system from different solar systems is us revolving around the relationship of a sun and the moon, all right? So us having this orbit of the sun and the moon within a certain space and the other planets and other stars revolving around that relationship is what creates the dynamic of a solar system. Nisi, what's going on? Happy to pick up your energy, happy you're here, all right? So when we're looking at the dynamic of... uh us being in the solar system, uh, we're a solar system amongst other solar systems and within a big ass galaxy. Okay. So this is why when we talk about our space, all right, this was always a space here over time, different stars started resonating around this space and different things started being created out of this space. Just like that's what's going on in the astral realm, other stars having different relationships, uh, even if you look at Greek mythology and you you see the stories between different stars, you know, as representing different entities and different warfares, marriages, murders. So, you know, um, that's really what's going on in the astral realm. So when we get into the houses, these are simply the different spaces, the different separate spaces that make up a space, right? And that space would be the solar system, all right? Now we know it's 12 different spaces. But when we look at the first house, this is where we birth our existence for the most part. This is where we birth, birth our consciousness. This is why the ascendant, the rising, which is obviously just another name for the first house, is very important to understand the activity of your first house because that has a lot to do with everything dealing with personal outlook, personal traits, how you perceive things besides your sun, because now the planets are your tools, but we're dealing with the areas of the of life. So whatever signs are in the house, that's affecting what you're experiencing in that area. And the tools are also ex affecting what you're experiencing in that area, what you're attracting and pushing out and how you're utilizing a tool in that area. So when we're looking at the first house, uh, so I just have some minor notes. I'm going to make sure they're up here. So uh, when you're looking at the first house, it having everything to do with self is why it's very important to uh, understand that this is how we start to determine our life path, all right? Whenever I use the phrase life path in a chart, I'm talking about the travels of the rising sign, the travel of your first house, your first house, the I am. So we're born, we're birthed, the I am, we realize we have consciousness and whatever vision, sight, that we have with that consciousness is what we travel the rest of the chart with different areas of our life with. This is why the first house has a lot to do with how people personally perceive you. A lot of times, if you look up things dealing with the first house, it's going to say how people perceive you, especially on first impression, because you're taking that person, the first house travel to other areas, whether it's a social house, a spiritual house, another interaction house, a, a career house. So, uh, that's all the different influences of the first house. The first house also has a lot to do with how we go about birthing and starting things. Okay, we're going to see similarities between the functions of the sun and the functions of the first house. And if you look at their relationship, they have a tight relationship. The sun is home. I mean, the sun is exalted in the first house. All right. So um so the uh which I'm going to be going through planetary influences, elements. Matter of fact, I should have said that first. Basically the format of how I want to talk about all the houses. So first I want to just break down the traits. 
uh, the origin of the sign that was birthed there. Then we're going to talk about elements through the houses, planetary influences in the house, rulers and planets in the house, the ruler, the ruler and the effect of the ruler through the houses of the house. And then that house's relationship with every other house. So these are all pretty much all the most important things when it comes into dissecting a house and making sure when you guys you know, continue to study or read that you know everything to take into account when you're looking at a house. So when we're looking at the traits, all those different traits, personality, personal expression, how a, a huge influence on how we start and birth things and also new beginnings in our life. So a lot of new chapters in our life could have strong first house energy. So it may be an area dealing with another area. It may be a, a circumstance dealing with another area. So it might be your first day at work in the sixth house. It may be your first week in a new third house. You just moved. You're getting accustomed to a new neighborhood, new surroundings. Regardless of what that first circumstance is, it may have a lot to do with the elements and the activity of your first house, especially your rising ascendant period, because that's still your personal outlook. So on first experiences, new beginnings, this, is, this energy shines bright. This is why, hence... When we walk into new environments, our rising, this is why we'll guess, if we had to guess people's zodiac signs, it's a first impression thing. This is why you're seeing a lot of their first house. People that really know astrology, or or I don't even want, I don't even want to say really know, people that are just familiar with astrology, like all of us in here, right? We could all name basic traits of every zodiac sign. This is why sometimes if we go guessing people's zodiac signs, we may, a lot of us may guess they rising before their sun. You know, we might see a lot of different traits associated with their appearance, right? So if they're a Scorpio a rising, but they're really a Gemini sun, we may be like, okay, they kind of look reserved. They have more of a, look like they're more of a private individual, look like they're more of an incognito aura, don't really say too much, more of a reserved, stealthy, you know, type of, of aura and appearance. We might be like, yeah, they're a Scorpio. That's Scor I, I pick up the mood of Scorpio here, the eighth house energy, but you really just guess they rising. <laughs> you really just guess they rising. So um, that's why we may do that. And that's how important that's that's how much of similarities the sun and the first house share. So much similarities they share. They both deal with appearance, have a lot to do with influence on how we go about birthing things, creating things, new, new beginnings. All right how we express things, because the first house is our personal outlook. So it's dealing with how we express things with our personal outlook. Okay. Um, this book, I've mentioned this a couple of times on this platform. I haven't in my in my uh journey, which is something I actually want to do more of, but I haven't really read that much astrology books. However, this book, like I literally got <laughs> I got books right here that is kind of getting a little dusty. But uh this book has been one that I've that's just been a cornerstone for me, guys. The Rulership Book by Rex E. Bills. All right, I know a couple of y'all have said, like, y'all already got the book, Boro, but it's basically all rulership influences of every sign, planet, and house. So it's an index, all right? And it just guides you through things that influence certain things. So uh, uh, basically why I picked it up is because I just want to go through any other first house theme that's pretty significant um, associated with the first house besides all of those other themes. Ability, ability for one to construct something. So depending on the activity in the first house, once again, that's just more so another theme of how you go about creating something with the first house. All right. Uh, uh, we also know the first house is dealing with physical appearance and the body. Now, all the uh, this is going to be another series we'll get into eventually dealing with health in the Zodiac. Um, just a little spiritual health tip health hack right now since we're here all the houses correlate to different parts of the body but sometimes when we're dealing with a certain issue in the body if we could find that house that's dealing with it so let's say you're dealing with a, your bad nerves your nervous system is a little jacked up you're dealing with some type of anxiety condition or disorder or whatnot the sixth house rules your nervous system so what we want to do we want to go to your sixth house first we want to see the ruler of your sixth house we want to see what activity your ruler is dealing with. So let's say this is a real chart we're looking at right here, guys. This is just today's transits. The sixth house, the sixth house starts here in Aries. So this would be somebody's uh sixth house. The ruler is Mars. So Mars is in Aries right now. Mars is in the sixth house. 
So this person would have to look directly at their sixth house to see why they're dealing with health issues. You know, uh, this would be their wellness, their regimen, their diet, their energetic diet. This would be things dealing with their schedule. Maybe something in the workplace is overwhelming them. Now it's starting to deal with, you know, something with your nervous system. You're taking too many hours, bad rest work uh, relationship. All right. Things with your routine. Maybe there's something your project building and it's stressing you out. There's a certain project you're working out, working on, so trying to make a meet a quota or a due date, and that's starting to impact your nerves. So we want to look at the activity of the sixth house. All right. Of where, of, excuse me, excuse me. We want to look at the activity of the house that is dealing with that issue. If there's a problem with your feet or something, we're going to look at the 12th house. All right. But we want to look at the ruler. And then we want to look at the activity of the ruler in your chart. So let's say this person right here, we go, this person's like borrow my nerves is the end of third. So I'll, I'll bring that up. I'll be like, damn, you do have an airy six house. Have you been experiencing any form of intensity as far as power and controlling? Do you have power? Are you in a very power, power and controlling work environment? Uh, you know, are you dealing with a lot of aggressive energies, a lot of physical labor? Because Aries is dealing with physicality. Is there a lot of physical labor? Sister, my good sister, Neoma in the building. Happy you're here. All right. So um, I would just dissect the activity of the house from the element. The sign is in there. Somebody with Aries in the sixth house usually will, will run into some encounters with, you know, transformation, intensity, aggression, forcefulness at times in the workspace. They may be very passionate and deal with frustration at times, maintain, uh, managing their passion, trying to build things. So I look at all this different activity, ask this person, you know, these things so they could uh, manage it and become more aware of it. But then when I go to the ruler, and I see the activity of the ruler. Let's click on Mars. Mars is squaring Pluto. That might be an issue why you deal with the nervous system. The ruler of the sixth house has this square or is this has this opposite. And, you know, based on that friction or what's going on in that other area is playing on your nerves, too. It's playing on your nervous system. So you got Pluto in the third house. This person is going to develop a lot of deep transformations when it comes into relationships close to home. Siblings, relatives might understand, might be able to relate to abusive relationships close to home, might be able to relate to a transformative household, people in and out the household, you know, uh, might be able to relate to these things, making, trying to make long term connections with people close to home and seeing that relationship transform. So maybe that is playing out on this person's nerves and how they go about their six house wellness. Now their six house wellness is upside down because the transformation between these two areas is driving them crazy at times. So, you know, that's just that would just be a hack on how to get to things dealing with health, utilizing the houses and knowing that the houses correlate to each areas of houses uh, uh, of the body. All right. We want to look at the rulers, look at the activity of the ruler, but we could have a whole nother video and series about that. That's actually something we could do in one video. That may not have to be like a series. Um, so. But uh, I don't know how we got there. Okay, so just more themes with the first house. Uh, do, 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 that I feel like is important, which is a lot of different things. Oh, I was talking about physical appearance. Yeah, I was talking about physical appearance. So, you know, your first house influence is going to have a lot to do with your physical appearance in general. But uh. The, the physical body. That's how we got there. I was talking about the body. All right. So the first house is dealing with appearance, the body, but each house correlates to a, a area of the body. So the first house is really specifically dealing with the head area, but it does have an influence over on overall appearance, but the head area is the most specific thing. So different activity, different planets, different elements of your first house literally has a huge influence on things from skin tone uh, besides like genetics and whatnot, the things dealing with your hair, you know, so, so, you know, yeah, we deal with genetics, but genetics are not a hundred percent. When we have a child, when we reproduce, you know, you, we don't know that the child is going to take a lot of the traits or DNA of the father of the mother or whatnot. Like every process is unique in a different way, as far as how we, uh, you know, resemble our parents and who made us. So when we look at the first house, it still has a spiritual effect here with things dealing with uh, how our appearance and our physical body is cultivated because the first house, this ascendant, you know, this is basically marking the eastern horizon, the eastern horizon in the solar system. So wherever sign was rising in this area when we were born marks the ascendant, okay? When you take your first breath, 
literally when you take your first breath in this experience, this is where this was at. All right. So that first breath is going to correlate to a lot of things in with first experiences. All right. So first house, uh, significant activity in this house could be great for acting. Because this is a expression house. This is a firehouse. All firehouses are expression houses. So the element by default is fire. The houses are dealing with their elements. The houses are dealing with their modalities. Some The other day, somebody asked me a question about deciphering the difference between the 12th and the 8th house, or it was the eight, one of the water houses, and they were disregarding the modality. So yes, they're both water. Yes, they both deal with the subconscious. But depending on, uh, you know, the rulers of that house and those themes, every house and sign is different because they're all composed of different things, a combination of different things, even if they may share similar things. But when we're looking at that, uh, the modality, we have to apply the modality and the element to the houses as well, too, family. All right. So first house is cardinal and is fire. So it's dealing with a lot of creating a new expression with your personal with your personal outlook, all right? So a lot of significant activity in this house could lead to things naturally dealing with acting. This person may have a real dynamic personal expression in general, all right? They got a lot of planets in this house, so they have a significant planet in this house. Uh, a, The sun or something like that, Mars, okay? So we got acting, uh, do, 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 do. Acting can correlate to all the firehouses because they're all dealing with expression. Uh, we also have announcing radio. Oh, no, excuse me. Excuse me. Wrong page. Okay. We also have uh, yeah, attitudes, appearance. All right. Mother's side in a man's horoscope. And from the father's side in a woman's horoscope. All right. We may see some traits of the mother in a man's horoscope. And of the father in a woman's horoscope through the first house activity. Okay. Beginnings, skin influences. Influences also dealing with the skin. Anything inside the head, too, guys. Appearances external is one thing, but everything inside the head is inside the head. So issues with the eyes, teeth, nose, things with the brain. Uh, these are all all amongst the first house okay we also have influence of childhood first house is very strong in childhood i believe especially through this is why aries is very baby like being the sign born out of here because you know those first phases of life regardless of our energies we're very aries like as babies in general we're impulsive <laughs> we're impulsive where it's really all about us it, it, and we know that, like, we may, they may not be thinking that as babies or whatnot, but, you know, it's all about the baby. We don't care if it's 3 a.m. and that baby shat four times in a row and you're changing a diaper and you're about to throw yourself out the window. You're going you're gonna to change the diaper for the fifth time. It's all about the baby. It's all about those first stages of life, understanding who you are, eight, nine, ten years old, understanding who you are. So Aries is also a sign that's always going to be very childlike, playful, because they resemble that first stage of knowing self okay so a lot of influences with our childhood uh all right all right personality personal circumstances ego ego that's something that this house also shares um <laughs> that's something this house also shares with the sun we can get lost in the ego of our son we can get lost in the ego of our first house Remember, ego has a lot to do with the conscious and how you perceive yourself. The subconscious, the, your subconscious is more so your process of internalizing things, right? And now you have these behaviors and these natural root impulses, thoughts, feelings that stem from your subconscious. But the conscious, we trying to focus in on how we see ourselves and how other people see us and more chosen acts, intentional acts and expression. All right. So the first house 
you look at what somebody ascendant rising is and to some type of degree you know they could develop large ego out of this placement especially if they have certain things like maybe they may have certain gifts or powers that's highlighting things around their first house you know we all once again we all have dormant gifts in all areas and potential in all areas but it could just be a certain placement or something and make me this person starts feeling himself a lot in the first house or whatnot and now you look at that rising ascendant you're like oh they're sagittarius ascendant i guess that's why they feel like they know everything oh they're a, a gemini ascendant that's why their personal ideologies is over everybody else's that's the personal ego first house All right. Um, impression, impression on others, personal interests. All right. Journeys, short term journeys. All right. Cause of financial losses. OK, so some of our personal interests can be the cause of why stability goes upside down. All right. And this makes a lot of sense also when you look at Aries, because Aries doesn't really like Saturn energy at times, Saturn dealing with responsibility, management, earth energy, structuring of things. So the first house, Aries, whatever their passions is, whatever their impulses is, they're, they're going to experience it. Regardless of the state of their reality, they're going to be in their passion and in their own first house outlook. So that's how we all are when we come into our first house. We all could lose ourselves in things dealing with our personal interests because it's our personal interests, depending on what it is. All right. Morals, mentality, opinion of self. Okay. Outlook upon life in the world. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Physical body, physical conditions, acne, pimples on the face. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Parents. That's more appearance, personality stuff. Uh, 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 first house is correlating to more of a private life. That's the first house is just use the self. Another theme about the first house, this is your selfish house. I always say that this is your selfish house. This is the house where you, you do, nobody can't tell us how to go about dealing with our personal goals and aspirations, personal development at the end of the day. How one goes about self-development, one's capacity for self-development. Okay. Yeah, so those are just different themes that I just want uh, just going through that uh, chapter of the first house in this book. All right. But uh, there's a bunch of other things. But, uh, you know, those are just little side traits and whatnot. So that's what we got going on the first house. Now, back to the concept of these houses already being here and different stars and energies transiting this space to create the solar system we have today. The, the, the houses were, were here first, family, and that's why we always start things with the houses. The signs over time created themselves in these houses. Once again, stars accumulating, gathering, building relationships. You could pretty much say having sex, you know, creating other stars. And over time, we get this constellation born under this space. So Aries were, we don't want to say Aries rules the first house. No, the first house rules Aries. The first house was here. Aries, this is the womb it came out of. So Aries have first house-like traits. Now, Aries in the first house are two different things because we're comparing a sign and a house. All right, that's like comparing a fruit and a vegetable. They're two different things. But Aries has a lot of first house traits. So this is why they are dealing with their personal outlook, their personal passions, understanding who they are from a personal outlook. They can express a lot from a personal space. All right. They're going to deal with a personal transformation. They're going to deal with uh, making sure their personality or their personal intent in things is felt and heard. All right. That's why they could start birth, create things a lot of the time, or they could be inspired to start birth, create things a lot of the time. Those are the natural first house traits. All right. Now, elements through the house elements through the house guys all right so any element in this house is going to have a huge influence on how you deal with per processing personal issues in your life and it's going to be part of the aura that is worn on your appearance and personal expression how people perceive you so when we have fire in this house this is this is aries leo uh sagittarius ascendance now from a positive outlook you have fire in all your fire houses so you naturally are in tune with being able to embrace expression energy and circumstances that call for expression in these areas. 
The first house is dealing with personal expression. Fifth house is dealing with creative, artistic expression, connection with the inner child. Ninth house is more so the expression and display of our knowledge and wisdom. So when we look at the first house and you got fire here, you're already going to fire. Remember, the signs create the energetic weather, frequency, vibration in that area. So every time you're in that area, you're, you're dealing with that, with that, uh, you know, that temperament, that energy. So when you have fire in the first house, there's going to be a lot of, you, you have a lot of personal excitement and inspiration for express for expression and starting and birthing new things. Fire is dealing with the future. Fire is dealing with the element that correlates to the future. So having fire in the first house, this person is going to be very intrigued about what the first house could be, what the first house could manifest into. So this is why they can, fire risings can deal with high levels of, uh, you know, uh, they, they, a lot of them are naturally visionaries for the most part. Very intuitive here. Okay. Can be very insightful, can provide a lot of awareness. Their expression can be very dynamic, especially if they're into anything creatively, anything artistically. All right. They can provide vivid imagery with their personal expression. They can help people to see things. Now you will manifest a lot of transformation in your first, in your personal life because fire burns, transforms things. So you have to learn how to see the expiration date to things in your life. And that's to different thing, ways of thinking, certain habits in your personal life and learn to be in flow with transformation of things in your personal life. With fire in the first house, you could be ahead of yourself a lot because it's dealing with future energy. So we got a lot of intuition, insight, and vision empowered here. But sometimes it can be hard to grasp the present in your personal life. You could be looking too, be looking too forward towards the result of something. Instead of embracing the present of an interaction or an experience at times. So that's just something to remind yourself with fire in that first house. But this these can be very, especially if the sun and moon have some expressive energy. This could be as generally very expressive individuals. And even if they don't come off very expressive, when they do express themselves, that fire influence in the first house has no choice but to sh bring light and awareness to towards their true personal intent about things. All right. Uh, fire is also dealing with feeling, guys. Dealing with feeling, you can feel the heat of fire. You can feel the temperament of it, and you can see it. So this is why things dealing with how fire signs feel about things, feeling like excitement, feeling like something is a thrill, feeling like you know, uh, feeling the optimism in something, or being able to be in tune with the vision that they have for an outcome or potential with something in their personal life. That could that's all the impulse they need sometimes to start create or begin something in their personal life those are usually the traits they're looking for of uh, fire ascendance before they start birth or create anything that sense of excitement being able to see the future in it anything correlating to creative abilities all right could be very creative placement in general just having fire here water water in the first house cancer scorpio pisces risings water's dealing with the past the subconscious um uh, is dealing dealing with building self awareness through understanding the subconscious and internalizing our feelings, thoughts, and emotions. So when you have water in the first house, since it's a sign that element that deals with more with the subconscious, when you when it comes into you how you personally express yourself, you know a lot of times this is going to be straight from the heart space. It's going to be straight from feelings. It's going to be straight from a vibe of things. First house people with water in the first house have to be in the vibe, feel connected to a vibe, in tune with a vibration of something before they start birth or create it. It has to be a circumstance, a person, an environment that seems like it's in tune with its natural vibration and its emotional and mental well-being more than being something, a factor that can disrupt that. Uh, Water in the first house has to be careful of not sinking too deep into past circumstances in the first house. A lot of water in the first house growth comes from being able to dissect wisdom from past experiences in the first house. So that process is needed and water is just going to do what it does. So water dealing with the past and being able to 
you know, extract and grow from the past, that's going to happen wherever we have water at in our chart and in our water houses. But in the first house, since we're, that's what we're talking about today, you know, water ascendance, this is what you got to be careful of, making sure you're not allowing yourself to sink too deep into the past about past circumstances you can't control and allow yourself to only use that to fuel more of a wiser, mature approach to present circumstances. That's how you got to use that energy there. Now, when you guys deal with personal expression, a lot of the times you're going to have things that your personal expression, a lot of feeling or emotion behind it. So this is why water risings, when it deals with personal expression, personal, your creative expression at times, this is why you can really impact the subconscious of others, whether you're trying to motivate them, whether you're trying to help their healing process, whether you're trying to bring a new perspective, whether you're trying to give new a uh, sense of insight on how to deal with a past experience that you have experience with. Uh, you really have a strong influence on being able to hit the subconscious of others when you personally express yourself. And the first house also deals with what we're personally aware of in others. That's another thing. The first house also deals with what we're personally aware of in others. But I, I pretty much say that by pretty much said that by saying this is our personal outlook in the world. So fire in the first house can see the creativity and the talent in others. It could see the potential in others. Water in the first house can see the emotional and mental state through somebody's personal expression to somebody's appearance personal expression they can read a lot about what you may have experienced or what you're experiencing internally earth in the first house all right this is our capricorn taurus uh virgo risings now the first house once again is a fire expression house now you put earth here that's dealing with stability being in the present all right, fire, uh, Earth, Earth rules the present. So when you have Earth in the first house, your life path is consisting of learning how to become a master builder, learning how to use the properties of structure, organization, time, patience, understanding what resources and building blocks look like in this experience, and using that to spiritually and personally develop. When you have Earth in the first house, when it comes into what you're trying to create and birth, when it comes to whatever this native is trying to create and birth, they're going to use a lot of Earth energy behind it. It has to have a format. It has to have some regulation, some type of stand, some type of stand on how we're going to work on it. It needs the blueprint. You know, once again, those are the properties of Earth. It's going to be hard for Earth first house to participate with something in their personal life if they feel like it's unstable, if they feel like there's no format to it. That's kind of what they need to let something in their first house or participate with it a lot of the time. First house is going to be seen as stable. It's going to be seen as stable personally. So, you know, people may throw that tag on you and you may be like, man, this is the most unstable year of my life, but whatever, I'll take it. You know, so that's earth in the first house a lot of the times. Now, what Earth in the first house has to be aware of is making sure that you're not being, you're not stagnating the things you want to personally express and create and experience and what your aspirations, because you're over planning, over structuring, you taking too much time, or you're trying to identify every resource you need, because there's going to be times you're going to have to learn how to improvise. If there's a will, there's a way. So sometimes you want to make sure uh, in the firehouse that's dealing with raw creative expression and the consciousness of self that you don't rely on other resources all the time to create things in the first house. All you need is that raw intent and will. And sometimes you may have to remind yourself in different chapters of life. And then we got air in the first house. These are your Libra, Gemini, Aquarius ascendants. Air is dealing with logic, is dealing with thinking. Is dealing with relatability is going to attract related uh, uh, relationship activity and interaction in the area it's in. It's in. So the personality is going to come off very relatable and is going to come off dealing with logic and intellect. So in some type of shape or form, the personality can come off very intellectual. It can come off very sociable. The water and earth risings can come off more reserved personally. Now, they may be you may run into a water or earth rising. But they suns and moons is expressive as hell. So their appearance and aura may look like they're not reserved. But once you start interacting or once you start seeing them conduct themselves in this party or this environment and you start realizing, oh, no, damn, that's kind of just a first, in first impression. That's kind of just how, you know, they come off. But no, their actions and moon is relating, it's sociable, it's connecting, it's expressing. So air in the first house and fire in the first house, your personality can come off extroverted like. And you might have your sun and moon in an introverted space. 
So now people perceive you as somebody that, you know, is very expressive, relatable, but then, you know, your sun and moon has to kind of deal with prepping itself to be in situations that deal with a lot of interaction or whatnot, even though when it likes to be in, a, it wants to be in a recharging space. So just giving the examples and the differences between the uh, first house and, um, you know, things dealing with expression, how we're seen. So having that air in the first house, you're going to come off relatable, more sociable. You're going to have a sociable personality for the most part. Um, you're going to have, once again, you're going to have to intellectualize and really, you know, you think heavy about things in your personal life. You could be uh, extreme critical <laughs> analysis in your uh, uh analytic in your own head about things dealing with the personal life so you kind of got to be able to remember you know or reaffirm here that um trying not to overthink about things that possibly even haven't happened yet or whatnot or remind yourself if you're thinking too deeply on something you know on the outcome of something that hasn't happened because you know the first house could just have or uh, thinking logic overload at times um and you want to allow your relatability, your natural personal feel to be able to com uh, communicate, articulate yourself, relate with others to create opportunities for yourself in this lifetime. You're going to be very aware of others and how in different context clues, dealing with how other people communicate and think about things. Uh, and the personality can shine bright here a lot of the times when one is just pushing out, allowing their personal ideologies to be seen about things. You're going to you're going to create a lot of different personal ideologies and concepts about how you see life in general. All right. Um, so that's what we got elements through the house. Now, planetary influences through the houses, guys, through the first house. All right. Now, uh, the sun, the sun is exalted here. So whether you're a Leo rising and you have the sun ruling this house or you have the sun in this house, these are the sun in this house is exaltation and the sun ruling over this house as a Leo rising is pretty strong too. All right. Uh, so these are the different ways to have a planetary influence over a house. Either that planet is in that house or it's the planet that rules the sign of the house. So that would be planetary influences over a house. Now, uh, you guys know wherever the ruler is at, once again, the ruler is going to bring that activity to this area. Now, the planet in that house, that means that's the area where that planet is pushing out and doing whatever it's doing in that area. You're, every time you use your Mars, your sun, your moon, you're using it in that area. All right. And when it comes into planets in the first house, they're all attached to personal expression. They're all attached to these first house themes. So if we have the sun in the first house, this person uses a lot of sun energy when they go about starting, creating things, birthing things. Their personality appearance is going to have a lot of sun energy. So these people personalities are easy to be seen. These people are seen when they walk in the room. It may be how they dress. It may be they laugh. It may be how they greet people. It's going to be some type of vibrant light and spark when they enter the environment. This person can be very, this person has a lot of potential to sometimes get lost in ego of how they see themselves. Sometimes perceptions of how they see themselves can be draining because they're always looking at what's going on in the first house and how they've conducted themselves in situations. This person's going to have a very dynamic expression. So when they express themselves, the whole room can hear it and feel it and see it. Whether they're having chaotic negative actions and expressions or they're having creative inspiring influential expression that sun is going to make that first house expression awareness travel and impact others hard all right the sun in the first house is going to be very action oriented towards things and um you know with personal aspirations and goals the sun wants to create and birth and give life so when it's in the first house this person has a lot of vitality optimism and life towards things dealing with creativity all right here we just want to make sure we're managing ego and we want to make sure that uh there's always a sense of you know humility and humbleness around perceptions of yourself um you're acknowledging any vulnerabilities dealing with creation or being seen for things, you know, understand you have that, that power here. So you're here to be seen as somebody who's confident in their personal expressions and being able to give life to personal aspirations here. It's just that the sun is exalted. Exalt exaltations can exhaust itself. So sometimes you could be heavily caught up in everything you got going on with personal creations and development and you could gas yourself out a lot of the times you always want to have a sense of pace in this area you always want to make sure that when universes utilize certain people places and things to remind you you may be overdoing it with self-expression you may be overdoing it with how you think you personally see something 
you have to be in tune with that circumstance or that sign because that could cause a lot of, you know, uh, different type of chaotic situations in your first house. You know, it could hold you back from personal development. Maybe your ego expression is the reason why you can't get invited into certain rooms. So I could talk about how this placement is a gift, but this person, son in the first house person, may have such a dynamic expression that even when it's stepping on people's toes, they can't hear it. They, they can't take no critique about it. All right. So powerful placement, son in the first house, moon in the first house. All right. I have this placement. So when you got the moon in the first house, this placement can actually be more conceited than the sun in the first house. Because now the sun in the first house wants to make sure it look good and is very conscious of its appearance. The moon in the first house be feeling themselves. All right. The moon in the first house has a very deep subconscious relationship with their personal identity, with how they go about their personal actions. They're going to have more of an intuitive sense, being able to read people based off of how people personally express themselves. So this is just like correlates to like that water influence in the first house. So when you see people, a uh, moon in the first house, people are cancer rising, see people express themselves. Uh, we can read a lot about what type of emotional mental space you're in to even be expressing yourself a certain way. Um, the moon in the first house is going to be highly responsive and reactive towards personal endeavors and goals, you know, to the point that this is their comfort zone. So if they're neglecting things, dealing with personal goals, aspirations, personal development, or whatever fulfills them, depending on what sign the moon is in in this house, that that is very frustrating. They feel unstable. So this is why they can deal with imbalances at times, because how much of how much they're invested into the self. Now, none of this is bad. Being invested, you want it. the moon is going to nurture, respond, and you know understand, bring understanding to where it's at. Is of course this is a great area to do these things, but everything has its light and dark side, family. So the moon in the first house could be start failing themselves a little bit, and everything in the first house is worn. It, it's gonna get expressed. It's seen in your personality, it's seen in your expression. So a moon in the first house person could think they the shit, and be in whatever type of you know personal feel about themselves, and it'll be easy to be seen. That like then this person really in their internal in their mind how they process things internally. We could see through their expression. They think they really think this and that of themselves. The sun in the first house is going to do this subconsciously. The sun in the first house is just going to project, express, you know, and it's just in the, it's more so in the flow of just pushing out how to be seen. It's more conscious about how it's trying to be seen. The moon is subconscious. So how this person personally express themselves reveals a lot about how they really feel and think about things with the moon in the first house. All right. So. Uh, so that's the moon in the first house, and it could become a very strong manifestation placement once this person is able to really understand how to keep emotional intention and concentration on certain personal goals and aspirations. All right. So that's what we got going on with uh, the moon in the first house. My good brother Julius just entered the church, all right, what's going on, bro? So when we look at um, Mercury in the first house, this is my Gemini Virgo risings, and this is Mercury in the first house. You're seen as an intellectual. Your personal expression screams intelligence, critical analysis, ability to comprehend, communi communicative, relatable, you're going to be Mercury influences in the first house are very critical of people's per personal expression. They see that you stutter. They see that you can't pronounce them H's good. They see, they see, they see, they, they're reading things about your physical appearance, your, your collar, your, a girl Virgo rising. I take a girl Virgo rising out tonight. She's going to see I didn't really iron the collar of my polo shirt. <laughs> like she's going to notice shit like that. Like, damn, this nigga ironed the whole shirt. Why is collar so wrinkly? He really couldn't full, He really couldn't complete the whole job? He's probably a real 90% ass nigga. This nigga always give 90% don't complete things. Like, this is probably a personality trait about him. This is the mind of Virgo, of Virgo rising, Gemini rising, Mercury in the first house. Do, 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 do. When it comes into how other people personally express themselves and their appearance, but also to themselves. And this is where it could get overwhelming at times. So this is what could build a lot of self-awareness because this person is always studying their actions and how they personally express themselves. They're always thinking about how other people may perceive them at times with personal expression. So they're always studying themselves. 
but sometimes they could be a harsh critic of themselves that could push them to good, great heights at times with how they perform and create things, but it could be overwhelming. I always use the, this example of like, you know, Mercury in the first house, people could have a little zit, little pimple on their cheek, and then they start thinking it's the biggest pimple in the world, and then nobody even really noticed, but with all that Mercury energy, you start thinking there's really something crazy. You mad, you, you so critical of things dealing with your appearance and how you're personally seen. And now over time, because you concentrated on that goddamn pimple so much, that shit really growing into something big now. And now everybody noticing it. Now that was you being overly critical, giving so much thought power to something personally. And look, now you done gave it energy. All right. So Mercury in the first house has to be able to give grace to themselves when it comes into critical analysis, personal critical analysis. But boy, uh, that is a superpower in the first house. All right. A lot of opportunities can manifest in your first house uh, when your personal critical analysis and your thought forms, your mercury, your mind, your ability to the way seeing the way you process your thoughts personally, seeing the way you articulate your thoughts personally, seeing the detail of things personally. Mercury is going to be big on personal detail here. Per mercury in the first house have great memories. Mercury in the first house have great memories, so they're going to usually have great attention to detail to other people's personal appearance, and uh, when it comes to their appearance, a lot of times they could come off formatted, you know. Um, So that's Mercury in the first house. Uh, Mars in the first house. This is my Aries Scorpio risings and Mars in the first house. Okay. Now, these individuals, Mars is home here. So Mars deals with our passions and our intention. And deal with transformation. So people with Mars influence over their first house have so much power to constantly grow and evolve through acknowledging, you know, uh, through th their growth process. Sometimes it's not even intentional. Like they're not saying like, I'm going to like spiritually, personally develop on this. They're dealing with their personal passions and aspirations. But because Mars in the first house is so personally focused and concentrated on their passions and intentions, they're willing to go through whatever transformations, changes for those goals, passions, for those desired states of the first house. And that what brings the personal growth and development and the personal transformation. People with Mars in the first house are here to be seen personally as resilient. And we can see determination, concentration. We can see passion in your expression. We can see intention in your personal expression and how you go about creating and birthing things. Mars in the first house is going to create and birth things from a passionate, raw, intense, excited space. Mercury has to birth something from the first house from a detail-oriented, logical, calculated space. The moon has to birth something from the first house with its heart in it. The sun has to birth something in the first house that's also coming from a lively, excited, creative space. All right. So Mars, a lot of resiliency with personal transformation. This also could develop a lot of ego with this placement. It's not the, it's not too many placements that in the first house that ain't going to do something with ego. <laughs> That's the first house for you. So with uh with uh what's the name with um Mars in here, ego could get a little out of hand because Mars is going to be very passionate about its personal outlook about things. It's going to be a sense of passion behind everything with his personal interests. So you got to allow yourself to not be too stubborn and open towards the first house, learning different things through his experiences. All right. But reaffirm how resilient you are. All right. Venus in the first house. Venus in the first house. This is Taurus, Libra Risings, Venus in the first house. All right. Now, this placement is going to bring a lot of charm into the first house. It's going to bring a lot of charm. Women with this placement usually come off extra gentle and shit. Extra gentle, delicate. Look like, uh, uh, you know, obviously Venus is dealing with beauty. So a lot of astrologers and whatnot. Uh, I would throw Taurus in there. I would throw some of these placements, Taurus, Libra rising in there, Venus in the first house. I, I definitely would throw these placements in there as, I guess, being more physically appealing to the eye even though it looks is in the eye of the beholder uh but with all that being said the vibration of venus being relatable cooperative sensitive caring nurturing that is what radiates in this person's personality now this person could be an asshole <laughs> this person could be an asshole but they got venus in the first house their personality gives charm she could be a demon but 
First impression, personality is going to give elegance, angelic, all right? Uh, but things dealing with beauty, things could get a little vain here, all right? So Venus could be a little caught up in the in the mirror here, stressing himself out about their hair and their edges and their skin and the size of their nose and their lips. And yeah, Venus could do that here. So it could be a little issues with personal, with self-esteem, with Venus dealing with value, self-esteem. So this person can go through their ups and downs. The whole world could probably tell them they look good and beauty, this, that, and the third. But trust me, they're going to be looking in the mirror, having this relationship of what how they feel like they're beautiful to themselves. So with Venus in the first house, Libra Taurus rises, you guys have to make sure you're always honing in on person, positive personal values. That's always going to make you feel beautiful regardless of how you physically look in the mirror. Your positive values, the things you do to impact your self-esteem and how you find out about placing your self-esteem, uh, what affects your self-esteem in the first house. Um, uh, but yeah, the charm alone, the Venus energy alone, just being cooperative, relatable, uh, coming off as uh, having a supportive something about your personality could seem like you're a team player. You're very supportive. All right. That could open up a lot of opportunities for you in general here. All right. Uh, Venus can give a little bit of traits that the moon gives off with conceit a little bit. So we kind of see Venus in the first house, like, okay, this brother or sister is feeling themselves a little bit. Like, okay, yeah, you pretty, but relax. Like, they could give that off a little bit, Venus in the first house. All right, so you got that aspect there. And there's going to be a high sense of value. Once again, they may go through their ups and downs with things dealing with self-esteem here, but Venus is in the first house. So this person is basically learning how to appreciate, love themselves in this experience. All right. And that's the reason you got Venus in the first house and your past experiences may not have really honed in on uh, valuing your existence, your personal existence in a partnership or relationship. OK, so that's what we got going on with Venus. Uh, Jupiter. Sagittarius, Pisces, Risings, Jupiter in the first house. This person is going to have a philosophical outlook at, at life and the world. This person can have a super superstitious like personality because in their in, uh, with their personal outlook, everything is about. That's so funny. That's so funny. Naja, what's going on, Naj? Happy you're in the building. As soon as we start talking about Sagittarius, a Jupiterian comes in the building. See how the universe work. But uh, when we're talking about Sagittarius, Ju uh, Pisces, Jupiter in the first house. Because this person comes off with a, uh, it has that Jupiter influence of looking at everything from a meaning perspective, a reason perspective, a karmic perspective, a spiritual perspective, philosophical perspective. This is why, uh, you know, it develops that superstitious nature in the first house because everything doesn't happen by default to the Jupiter influence in the first house. This person will have a very explorational personal life. Now, life is, life be life in life. Everybody's life could be a movie in some type of shape or form. But Jupiter ruling over the first house could deal with a lot of different episodes, miscellaneous people, places, and things. I'm trying to pull it to experience different things in different ways here. So overall, being a Sagittarius, Pisces, or Rising, or having Jupiter in the first house has everything to deal with this person creating their own personal belief systems in some type of shape or form. But it goes through so many different random ex ex cake. sometimes even what seems reckless unstable and chaotic in the first house because jupiter is always expanding so this person has to be conscious about what they're expanding about in the first house what they're adventuring about this person is going to most likely have a, a, a lot of life and vitality towards personally experiencing and exploring things sometimes this person can be a little overly curious personally because they're going to have a high intrigue for education especially if the education or the spiritual development or the intrigue for what they're learning correlates to personal development personal expansion but um uh yeah jupiter in the first house just can be reckless this also could be very charismatic the uh, expression here can be very charismatic very animated i'm a sun conjunct jupiter so this is why my expression is very animated that's why when sometimes when i'm live streaming i think it's you feel me five minutes on the, at the Apollo sometimes, you know, is that animation energy, you know, trying to spread the optimism or the excitement or the positive vibe. 
So when that Jupiter energy is like next to the sun or is next to like, is in the first house by the ascendant, influencing things, dealing with our expression and our action. That's why you could come off really animated. Your your actions and whatnot are always expansive. You, you always, you have, uh, what's the word? Exaggerated expression and action at times. Um, Now, another thing, guys, when we talk about these planetary influences, things are more magnetic when they're on that ascendant. So planets in the first house is 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 all significant. It's still all influenced in the first house. But when we see planets at, at the start of cusp, you know, especially in the first house, this is like you can't hide this about your personality. It's it's screaming when you walk in a room. So you know, would it be closer to closer to that ascendant angle? Would it be in closer to that space where you took the first breath at that degree? You know. This is all over your personality, all right? I'm a Uranus, Neptune, and Moon conjunct of my ascendant. So my emotions about things that I'm individually invested into and my individual belief systems, I couldn't hide that from my personality. And I could be very opposing and rebellious towards these things personally, you know? And it's always been that way in my life, regardless of what my belief system was in that chapter of my life. So planets, any of you guys that got planets on the ascendant, these energies are screaming when you walk in the room. These energies are screaming on first impression when you introduce yourself, when you just walk into that cookout, that party, or in the club. They This is what they seen. They seeing that. So somebody with Jupiter on that ascendant is most likely walking into the party, hair bouncing, happy looking like they're ready to excited they're happy to be here they're happy to have a good time ready to mingle you might see this sense of adventure expirational optimism liveliness in their personal expression all right this is how natural sagittarius energy can come off this is how pisces can come off look how look how happy sometimes pisces is when they're in an environment being able to connect amongst the similar values or how they like to have fun they damn near come off like sagittarius is that sometimes you know so um, this is Jupiter in the first house, a real teacher student like personality. And that's one thing that people gravitate to your personality about your ability to teach and make concepts understandable and relatable to others. And uh, people also feel like you're a safe space to relate their experiences to. So Jupiter in the first house could always thrive with psychology and, you know, counseling with others because you can digest other people's personal experiences well. Uh, one thing I didn't mention about Mars in the first house that affects how they deal with other people personally, Mars in the first house is very well at reading other people's personal intentions. They're really good at, at, at reading people's personal intentions and um, motivating other people's subconscious and bringing a personal influence to help others transform. All right. And they could be a uh they, they it's easy for them to see what you might need to change in your life or what's a burden or attachment in your life. Because Mars in the first house is very passionate, goal-driven, at least about anything that's dealing with their personal wants, desires, and passions. So anything that's playing out as a blockage or a distraction for Mars in the first house, Aries Scorpio rising, they detect that quick. So they could see in other people's lives why they may not be able to personally transform or develop, depending on this this person's attachments and burdens as well. So Jupiter in the first house. Saturn in the first house. All right, I have this placement as well. All right, this is for my Capricorn and Aquarius risings and Saturn in the first house. Now, Saturn in the first house is uh, at its fall space here. So we have planets that are a detriment and we have planets in its fall space, guys, the two different things. All right, detriment, I like to say this planet is basically is just debilitated. It struggles here, but it's still doing what it got to do. Fall space. Is, is pl this planet is more of in a subconscious space. Uh, sometimes it, they may not understand their actions here. They could deal with confusion here. When it deals with doing things positively or productively, it could surprise itself. It could be highly impressed, surprise itself, feel like it's not real, still question and doubt. All right. So it's in a dreamy space here. All right. But it's going to be highly intuitive in that space. Just like when we're dreaming, we're building a relationship with our intuition because we're connecting to the astral realm. We're getting an image of what our subconscious looks like. And then we come back into the conscious realm. 
So depending on what we're experiencing in life, this is why you might be dealing with nightmares. This is why we might be fighting, running from something in our dream, being in a, being attacked in our dream, feeling mighty and prosperous in our dream, feeling unstable. And that we basically getting a perception of our subconscious. So when we look at um, uh, Capricorn Aquarius Saturn in the first house, any planet that's in its in its false state, that's something a lot of astrologers don't mention. All right. It actually heightens intuition here. And you have to learn to lean on intuition because how you see things and perceive things are going to come off as illusions in this house at times. So Saturn in the first house, it's fall here. So basically, this person from a karmic perspective is learning how to apply structure, discipline, organization, format to personal development aspirations, regardless of what they're trying to create and build, what their personal outlook is in the world, how they go about personal appearance and personal development. It needs format. This person will be experiencing a lot of restrictions and limitations in their personal life in order to help them understand how to do things with more foundation, with more structure. Uh, they're going to be seen as an example of personal stability. This is why, you know, even with what I do with me being a Saturn in the first house, a lot of what I express a lot of the times, you guys see my first house energy all the time, the moon and Saturn in here oh, and all the mother planets conjunct my ascendant, but ascendant. But when you look at my Saturn in the first house, that's why, you know, I'm always coming off personally expressing things from like a discipline structure point of view. It may seem like sometimes my personal views could be a little bit more comfortable dealing with doing things the hard way or doing the work. I may, I may express a lot of things about family. We got to do the work. We got to cut this off. We got to discipline this, blah, 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 blah. All right. So that's Saturn in the first house. I'm always that personal intent of having to go to work, structure something, build something, break something down. That's how your personality comes off. So it's some authority like presence in your personality. You may have a bossy ass personality. <laughs> All right. You may have a bossy ass personality. Capricorn, Aquarius, Saturn, rise. Uh, I was about to say Saturn rising. Saturn in the first house. All right. Now. Well, you, some Capricorn, Aquarius, rising, Saturn in the first house may have a bossy personality, but they don't really boss over their personal priorities and goals. So it's a little faulty. But there's more respect when people see you honor being the boss and authority over things in your personal life. And that sense of stability, discipline, structure radiates through your personality more than you trying to move like a boss through your expression instead of being the boss of yourself in your first house. And that's what you're learning how to do here with these placements here. Uh, everything is karmic with Saturn. It's probably the most karmic placement besides the nodes and activity with the luminaries, the sun and the moon. So when you got Saturn in the first house, uh, there's no rush for a goddamn thing with your personal life and personal development. Whenever you're trying to get something done over uh, in a speedy amount of time with personal development, personal goals in the first house, that's always the wrong way to look at things. You are here to learn how to get adjusted in time. You are here to learn how to take some personal goals, aspirations, and cement them in foundation and commit to them and watch them grow. There's going to be a lot of things that you build habits of in your personal life that you have to learn to restraint and cut off. And this placement can also restrict their personal expression. So it could be things this person wants to birth, wants to create, something this person wants to be seen for personally. And Saturn may say, it doesn't make sense. How does that add into our reality, build stability? We don't have the resources for that right now. You have to have a good self-check system. This is coming from somebody with Saturn in the first house. You have to have a great self-check system to tell yourself, I don't care, Saturn. I'm going to improvise. I'm still going to honor your format. I'm still going to be systematic. I'm still going to use all the resources I do have. I'm still going to uh, commit myself. I'm still going to discipline anything else. I got to discipline or restrict anything else to help support what I'm doing in my first house. But no, I have all the resources I have, which is my first house, my will, my consciousness, my I am thing, knowing that I'm here. Uh, I also have my ability to devote time to something. And with time comes a process, a process of me being able to attract resources, you know? So, so that's what you got to do with Saturn in the first house, learning to, you know, that, that personal master builder energy, learning to work with restrictions, you know, especially before the age of 30. All right. Oh, uh, you got these influences in your chart, especially before the age of 30, you may watch your peers get their hands on resources in their personal life before you, uh, and there may be a delay on things dealing with stability at times in your personal life. All right. So things start to expand after the age 30, but that has a lot to do with application with uh, what you've been disciplining. So me, I'm about to turn 31 uh, this October. 
All right. So, you know, my theory of Saturn return phases being more intense once you once you're done with it from third, would it be more intense 30 to 36? So far, so good on that theory. I'll just say that. All right. So, you know, 2730 at Saturn return and Saturn returns in general is I'd always like to look at that as the grace period for universe and circumstances to remind us and uh, establish what's supposed to be regulated with a, from a sat from a Saturn perspective. I feel like the years, the first three to six years after that phase, so ages 30 to 36 and ages 60 to 66, I feel like that's when the application of that phase comes in. But in general, Saturn in the first house, you're the example to show us what, you know, result over time looks like, uh, what trust in your process personally looks like. And there will be times where you, you do not want to, you, there's going to be times where you really want to leave a process you committed yourself to in the first house. You know you're not going to leave it because you already committed yourself. You already got Saturn locked you into locked you in into something. But learning how to move, building a sense of resiliency through obstacles, restrictions that that you're going to have to learn to get close to obstacles and restrictions with Saturn in the first house, and that's going to be huge with your manifestation creation process. And then people are going to see that sense of stability and format when you express yourself, because that's how you built things in your first house. So now it radiates through your personal expression. All right. Uh, Saturn in the first house. Um, uh, just Neptune and Uranus and Pluto. Okay. So Neptune in the first house, this is to a degree also Pisces risings. So Neptune in the first house Neptune is such a compassionate, empathetic, angelic-like energy. He's dealing with the source of our creative spiritual awareness. Is a